time again for one of my walking and talking vlogs that no one asked for. But today I wanted to discuss, I'm walking to the bank because I need money to put into my laundry card. But I just wanted to talk about the issues facing South Korea here and with mental illness and stuff. Because just the other day, um, all of, everyone has left. All the international students, 90% of them, 99% of them have left South Korea. And the only ones reigning here are the ones like me who are working at the English camp or these um, Vietnamese students who just come for a short amount of time and just study Korean. Uh, so it's pretty much I'm alone in this dorm. And one of my flatmates was the last to move out because he was the head RA. And I did not go to see my, my friends off at the airport or like out in front of the dormitory here because I have something called separation anxiety. Um, basically what that entails is when people leave me or it's normally prevalent in kids but I've never been able to shake it off. So um, basically what it is is kids, mainly children but sometimes it stays around during adulthood, um, they get very distressed and have panic attacks when people leave them or they're left alone or um, basically in my case I'll give you an example. So one time I was at the store with my mother and I had to go pee. So my mother's like, okay, go to the bathroom. I'll be right here. So I went to the bathroom and I went back to the aisle where she was located and she was no longer there. And I started panicking. I had like a complete meltdown. I started crying. Turns out she was just three aisles down, but I thought she had left me. So being separated from my mother, um, also being separated from my family friends after university causes me severe anxiety and stress. Um, after every semester I have a mini panic attack and stuff uh, so that's what separation anxiety is so that's why I didn't see any of my friends off and one of my flatmates got very angry that I didn't go tell my friends goodbye even though I had met with them previously one-on-one -on -one, and I did send them messages of good luck thank you so much for being my friend and stuff again my flatmate was not too happy with me about that and he was talking about well why didn't you go see them off blah 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 like this so I tried to explain about my separation anxiety and how much stress that would go, that would um, cause on to me. So he asked me, well, have you ever tried to get over it? And I thought this was an extremely rude question. And I said, yes, my entire life, all 20 years, 20, more, 20 plus years of my life, I have, um, oh, see this, sorry. This is what the cold weather does to my body. Anyway, um, this is what I've tried to do for the past 20 years of my life. I've tried to get over it and I can't. It's literally a mental illness. I've tried so hard to get over it. And then he's like, well, have you ever tried? And I started thinking, who the hell are you to ask me if I've tried to get over my mental illness before? And I just got so angry at him. I just stopped talking. And the reason is because mental illness in South Korea is not as important as it is in the United States and Western countries. Mental illness is seen as a problem that you can fix when sometimes you just can't fix it. Um, and that brings up the loss. That brings up um, the discussion of depression here in Korea. And um, just yesterday, sorry, just yesterday, um, famous Korean K-pop star um, Kim Jong-hyun a member of SHINee and one of the biggest stars in my life committed suicide and he killed himself um, with carbon monoxide poisoning and I read that he had like seasonal depression and stuff like that and I've heard like some of the first things Korean older Koreans have said crossing the street right now is oh that's a shame I feel bad for his mother or he was supposed to appear on the show and not caring about him as a person and South Korea is a terrible country for people with mental illnesses because it's not talked about. It is terrible for people of color due to the racism. It is terrible for queer people uh, due to the homophobia. So South Korea, for all these K-pop stands out there and people who think South Korea is this type of utopia, South Korea is an absolutely terrible country for people with mental illnesses and people with depression and people disabled people, queer people, and people of color. So just please remember, South Korea is not this beautiful utopia. Now, don't be getting the wrong impression. I love South Korea. I wouldn't have uprooted my entire life in the United States to come live here 10,000 kilometers away from my family if I didn't love it. It's just that South Korea, sorry, I can't breathe. I just climbed stairs. The fact of the matter is 
South Korea is an absolute hellhole for people who are minorities. If you're neurodivergent, if you're queer, if you're trans, if you are any of the stereotypical what Korean people view as Korean, you will not fit in very well here. With that being said, it is getting better in South Korea and I have seen improvements. And South Korea is a beautiful country. Everything about it I love and stuff. It's just that it is very hard for Korea to be what the Koreans don't view as, what the Korean society views as Korean. Um, it is very hard. It also brings up this question. I've always been told that South Korea is a collectivist society, but ever since moving here, I thought to myself, a few months after moving here, I thought, is South Korea really collectivist or is it conformist? Um, do they, because when I think of the word, maybe I'm just wrong here, and if I am, please prove me wrong. I want to learn. But when I hear the word collectivist, I mean of, I think of everyone working together for the common good, putting aside differences. And the word conformist, to me, means having everyone uh, shift into this bubble, into this mold of what this society views as correct. And maybe I'm, I've hit that point in my time in South Korea where I'm starting to see only the negatives of the country. I've passed my honeymoon phase and my awakening phase, and I'm here in this anger stage of Korea where I'm starting to see everything that's wrong with the country. Um, but South Korea is a capitalist hellhole. Um, SM Entertainment, after Kim Jong-hyun's suicide, um, they only, the business people in South Korea, I'm climbing downstairs right now, sorry, but the business people in South Korea only see their workers as a source for profit. They don't see them as people. That's why you have record numbers of stress, the highest work hours, the lowest pay. South Korea's minimum wage is only like, what, five and a half dollars? US per hour and if people just aren't respected over here as workers maybe that's just my socialist intake of the country there has been amazing work being done by groups here in Korea um, it's starting to become more accessible to um, people in wheelchairs and disabled people there is the South Korea mental health hotline that has propped up it is getting better here in Korea and we, there's, you can only go. You can only continue to go up from here. Anyway, thank you. I'm back in my flat now, but thank you for sticking with me through this rant. Um, again, I do love South Korea. I wouldn't have uprooted my entire life in the United States to come live here if I didn't like it. So, I just hope that recent events do bring up the crisis of mental health here in South Korea and begin to start the discussion of how mental health is ignored or stratified, I don't know if that's the correct word, but stratified, um, disregarded in Korea in general. So thank you guys for sticking along with me through this epic rant. Um, I hope to see you next time and peace out. Be safe.